Hello, brothers and sisters in Hardo's family. We were in China during the cyclone, and it was pretty bad all over the news. Many parts of the city were flooded, and even some debts. However, we were untouched. The hotel we stayed in lost power a few times, but besides that, we were okay as we prayed. This all happened two days before we were to leave to meet with Sister Janavi and Pastor Joseph. Thank goodness we didn't have major issues flying there. But I had another trial that caused my heart to ache at the airport. I found myself in pain and a heart full of bitterness all over again. If it wasn't one thing, it was another. I thought, not again, not on this trip to India. But here I was. Once I arrived, we had a warm welcome. As I desired to seek the Lord's face, I needed his comforting. So the first day we arrived in the evening, I did adoration. And the reading hit me right between the eyes. It was truly Holy Spirit that chose the readings because it addressed what was going on in my heart. As an aside, I encourage each of you to get the Sinu Jesu book if you haven't already. It's a journal entry of a priest at prayer during adoration. And it's a great book to read to get a word from the Lord when you're feeling dry or unsure where you stand with him. Or most importantly, to hear his heart each day, especially during adoration. This is from page 94 in Sinu Jesu. Jesus began, Begin this Advent season full of confidence and hope in my unfailing mercy. Although I'm coming and coming soon, I'm already present. Look at my Eucharistic face. Know that I'm here for you in the sacrament of my love. I'm here to console you, to comfort and instruct you, to give you an experience of my divine friendship already here in this life, so as to prepare you for the glories of friendship in the next. In this sacrament, I wait for you. So many emphasize that they must wait for me, and yet I'm already present, close to them, and disposed to reveal to them the secrets of my heart. They forget that it is I who wait for them to come to me. How often did I say to my disciples, come to me? They understood, at least most of them did. The intensity of my longing for the company of souls, I would have all souls come to me and remain with me. This is a secret of priestly holiness. Once a priest begins to come to me, seeking my Eucharistic face, and longing for the company of my pierced heart, I will come to him and make my home in him. And with me will come my Father and the Holy Spirit. Thus will his priesthood be forever consecrated and sanctified and rendered divinely fruitful. Spend this Advent, my beloved friend, my priest, close to me in the sacrament of my love. Be my priest adorer. Offer me yourself and I will offer you with me to our Father. Seek out the company of my Immaculate Mother and of the saints. Learn to live with them now so that you can live with them in eternity. Honor my mother in the mystery of her Immaculate Conception. This is a mystery full of grace and of light for those who ponder it. It is a remedy for many of the ills that afflict my priest and poison their souls. Invoke my mother conceived without sin and she will communicate to you something of purity and brightness of her all holy and immaculate heart. I asked our Lord for help in preaching to the priests of diocese. And as an aside, I had to preach the next morning with all this pain in my heart, feeling heavy and so out of it. I just didn't know if I'd be any good and was nervous to preach, if I could be honest. So he really answered me here because I knew Holy Spirit was addressing me having to preach the following morning. Jesus continued, Do not be fearful of preaching. Know that I'll be with you to speak through you and to touch even the most hardened hearts. Abandon yourself to me in complete confidence, and I will abandon myself to you, so that your words will be my words, and your presence my presence. That is what I long to do with every priest of mine. If only my priest would allow me to speak and to act through them, what miracles of grace they would see. A holy priest is quite simply one who allows me to live in him as in a supplementary humanity. In every priest, I would speak and act, delivering souls from the powers of darkness, healing the sick, but most of all, I desire to offer myself in every priest and to assume every priest into my own offering to the Father. This I would do at the altar, in the celebration of my holy sacrifice. But not only there, the life of a priest united to me is ceaseless oblation, and he, like me, is a perpetual victim. You cannot imagine the fruitfulness of such a union, and this is a fruitfulness that I desired for my Father's glory and for the joy of my bride, the Church. Do not stop transcribing my words to you. I speak to you to comfort and enlighten you, to show you how much I love you and want you at every moment close to my open heart. But I speak to you also for your brother priest and for the souls who would pray for them and who would offer themselves, that priests might be sanctified in truth. My word to you this evening 
is the cry of the prophet Israel that you sang a few moments ago. Be comforted, for behold, I'm coming very soon. Desire my come and prepare for it by living in communion with the most pure heart of my mother. I have confided to her the preparation of souls for my advent and glory. Hmm. These words were sobering. It's about Christmas. With all the recent trials, it's so hard to focus on the merriness and hope of Christmas when it doesn't feel like it, even weather-wise. But the Lord is asking me, asking us all to do that. So now Jesus began to speak personally to me. Jesus, what's on your heart? Jesus began. Your pain, whether you realize it or not, is a consolation to me. I'm using everything, beloved. Continue to do a little while longer. And continue to give yourself to me in any way that I come to you. Have faith in my promises and all that I've shared with you and what you call to do. Wait on me. I'm here. In your waiting, I've come. But concerning the soul, wait on me. I know what pain this has caused you. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I can see the Lord holding me from behind. I said, Lord, your humility. I know you work all things out for your good. I know you work all things out for our good. I don't understand it, but I even surrender that. There is hope, beloved. I want you to really love the soul and give them the benefit of the doubt these few weeks you're here. I want you to encourage them each day with how much you love them, believe in them, and trust them. Shower them with your love, beloved, unconditionally and unprohibited. And pray, pray, pray for the soul. Pray for their heart. I'm already convicting and much is going on deep down that you cannot see. But habits like this don't die quickly. It's their relationship with me that will cause them to forfeit this bad behavior and habit. Any time they get distracted with other things besides my presence and loving me, they suffer. You suffer. And our relationship suffers as well. You must remember everything they do to you is also done to me. So the pain for me is more than you can know. But I see far ahead the jewel that they will be. You only see your pain and the resentment. And I see a holy soul transformed by my light and love very holy at that please be patient with the soul and with me as i'm working i am working beloved lord am i asking your mercy that there be breakthrough you will have what you ask for if you're patient beloved and that is what i'm asking this of you the next few weeks you forgive love sincerely and wholeheartedly and i'll move in an amazing way in this soul's heart as you pray for this soul to come to a place of self-reflection self-knowledge and repentance will take place give me your heart entirely in time i'll give you theirs I went to Baba Promises to discern because I was too attached to what I wanted. And I got, of course, patience. Hebrews 10.36 Patient endures is what you need now, so that you will continue to do God's will. And then you receive all that he has promised. This soul is in need of your love and prayers coupled with patience. And I am in need of your love, time, and attention, and adoration. I am lonely and longing for your love, beloved. I will do all that I have promised. Trust me. Your faith is being greatly tested now. But you know I'm faithful. I want you to prepare the heart of my beloved brides for Advent season. And that means your heart must be in the same posture, my little one. Stay close to my mother, as I indicated, and she will prepare your heart to be my resting place. My manger, my humble abode. She will purify your heart, clean out traces of the world, and leave it poor, simple, and humble enough for me to enter and rest my head. For blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And that was the end of Jesus' message.